Uh, hi, it's uh, Karen here from Hill and Staff Solutions. Uh, I'm going to be talking to Prosper on the online prosperity show about uh, what you need to know in relation to HR requirements in your business. So managing people, compliance, um, and a few um, tools that you can use. So I'm really looking forward to it. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got the HR lady herself. Somebody's in trouble today. How are you today, Karen? I'm really good. How are you, Prosper? Fantastic. You see, people management is a challenge that every small business goes through. You know, um, when you are working by yourself, everything is okay. But when you grow and you start incorporating, um, you know, some sort of help, people working around you, you're going to need solutions and services from people that are well versed with dealing with other humans. All right, as small businesses, we're passionate about growing, but all the people we're going to be bringing in also need support, also need to be well looked after, and also need to be um, encouraged to do their work so that we can then have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. I've never been really good with HR. That's the reason why I decided to work on my own. But we've brought in um, Karen Helen from uh, Helen Staffing Solutions to just let us know how she helps small businesses to be more pro profitable and productive while actually reducing um, you know, risk by hiring the right people and also making sure they're treated well. Now, Karen, tell us a little bit about your role and how you help small businesses. Okay, so um, with small business, as you said, the main focus of the business owner should be to run the business, do what they're good at, to bring in the income and make the money and, and do whatever they're expert in. So I come in and help businesses um, deal with all of the compliance and the managing of um, issues that they might have. So um, making sure that there's a foundation in place. So things like contracts, employment um, policies, that type of thing. But also being that, um, I suppose, person on your management team, even though, you know, I'm not in your business where if you're not sure of something, my clients give me a call and they'll say, what should I do here? Or I'm thinking about doing this, how should I go about it? So then I can um, have them bounce their ideas off me and then I can say, yes, you can do that. No, you probably shouldn't do that. Uh, how about this? How about this? Um, talking through the ideas and um, making sure they are covering their risk but also, also making sure that they've got good people in their business and their people are happy and they're doing their job. And so if they're not, we can go down a process of getting them back on track or sometimes, unfortunately, maybe moving them on. So it's just about making sure that people understand what their obligations are and doing a lot of that stuff for them so they can concentrate on what they do best in their business. That's that's phenomenal because once a business owner can save time, money and effort, especially without, you know, fumbling around trying to do reference checks or police checks and things like that, you know, it, it would give back to the business more than them wasting time on things like that. Now, sort of, can you tell us your process? Say a small business owner engages you today. What do you go through with them? What do you look at and what do you solve within their business? Okay, so usually, um, depending on what they need, but the, the main service I provide is providing HR support and advice by phone and email. So it can be a business pretty much anywhere in Australia because the legislation is the same everywhere. Some states have slightly different um, things in relation to WHS and a few others, but mostly employment legislation is the same across Australia. So I would go into the business and do a bit of a HR audit. So I get them to fill in um, a few pages of questions. So it gives me an understanding of where they're at. So are they a startup and have nothing? So they need 
contracts, policies, they need some processes, they need some understanding, or are they a business that's been established for a few years? They have a few things, but they haven't really done much in the last few years. So it gives me a good starting point to know um, what to prioritise. So um, if they've already got some things in place, giving them a bit of a plan. So that might be a plan um, for the next six or 12 months, or it could just be getting the foundation in place and then um, you know, talking about what they need to do later on maybe. Great stuff. So you did mention that um, you, you go in and then you look at maybe the basics or just the essentials of what they need. Um, just maybe skim through that. What would you call the basics um, that is required for a business? Okay, so um, an employment contract for staff that you have is quite important because it sets the expectations. Um, I know a lot of businesses go along and they don't have employment contracts, they don't have any sort of documentation which may never be a problem, but if something comes up and there's a, an issue with performance or there's some sort of dispute, if you've got an employment contract, you can go back to that and say, well, here's the employment contract. It states all of the conditions, you've signed it. So let's talk about where the problems are. So there's that real foundation of you as a business owner setting out the expectations of what you your employee, tell some things like their work location, what their rate of pay is, how often they're going to get paid, all of those basics. So it's a really good starting point so people know what you expect. Same with policies really. Um, so say for instance a code of conduct. Um, if you've got a business and um, you're dealing with customers, um, you want to set a standard in relation to what you expect of your employees. So that could be something like the way you expect them to dress. So you might have a uniform, you can put those sort of things in there, or it could just be um, the standards of behaviour. So people are really clear about what you expect. And if they do something wrong, they can't come back and say, oh, I didn't know that was, wasn't okay to do that. Um, because you've set out really clearly from the beginning what your expectations are. So you do that in policies like code of conduct and then the legislative policies like, um, you know, workplace bullying and harassment, discrimination, those types of things. So it really is just having everybody on the same page right from the beginning and um, making sure everybody knows what you expect. And also, um, you know, what, what their expectations might be of you as well. Things like leave as well. A leave policy can tell you um, what leave you're entitled to, but also the process of how to apply for leave. Whether there are blackout periods, for instance, if there's a business that's really busy over Christmas, they might say you can't apply for leave over this period of time. So it really is just about setting out the expectations. So there's no, um, I suppose, question about what's expected understandable that that is really profound and thank you so much for sharing that insight um i was just thinking while you're talking about you know the the dress code obviously whoever is going to be working with me would have to suit up okay um <laughs> great no as entrepreneurs um when we start a business it's usually the one person who's working you know day and night over the business and they become very romantic and very attached to the business in as much as it's hard to let go of a lot of things so policies would actually um you know uh, loosen those reins and make sure that the, the business is profitable and enjoyable now you also conduct and help people to make sure that the work place you know has got a star configuration to make sure that um you know everybody enjoys coming to work can you just walk us through your facilitation of this uh, star workplace program yeah absolutely so star workplace is an, an employee um, satisfaction survey and it's a great tool for people to understand um, how people are feeling in their business. And the thing that um, clients really like about it is because it's independent of um, any other sort of survey that might happen within the business, people are really comfortable in telling the truth. Um, one of the things I really like to do in the beginning is to really assure employees um, how confidential it is and that I don't even know 
who said what if they make individual comments. So it's a great tool for business. Um, they can get a, an idea, they get benchmarked against other businesses in their industry. And um, then again, we can put in a plan in place to um, implement anything where there might be some room for improvement, or we can just build on a really great culture that they might already have. But it's a really good um, indication to get how happy your employees are and where there might be some room for um, getting their suggestions on how things can improve. Understandable. So once they know that they're working within a perfect uh, environment and you are actually, um, you know, as an employer facilitating that, that yeah. just doesn't happen on its own. You would have maybe um, figured out if the personalities of these people are working together. Now, there's a few tools that are out there on the market, you know, like the, you know, the disc personal profile where you look at if somebody is of a dominance uh, influence, if somebody is, is, a, is an influencer or just influence, or somebody is steady in the way that they, um, you know, react with their emotions, et cetera, et cetera, or if somebody is analytical, reserved, or whichever way. So all of those conflict with the way people deal with each other every single day, day to day, uh, to work. Walk us through um, how you help um, employers with, um, you know, this profiling of um, their employees and how it actually benefits the business so that everybody is um, enjoying, you know, their stay and the business is being profitable and enjoyable. Yep. Um, I love DISC um, as a tool for teamwork, but also it's good for um, if people are having conflict in the workplace, because you can do a profile on both of the people and also a comparison report. So it gives them some really good tools to use to approach somebody a little bit differently to maybe just get around why they're clashing. Um, it's not really meant to be a recruitment tool, but it can be good for that as well. So you can get the type of person and the type of behaviours you need in a particular role or to fit in with a particular team to get balance or um, to get the, I suppose, the traits that might be good for that particular position. So um, you should really avoid pigeonholing people as well because we're a combination of all four. Uh, but for instance, if you're um, in you know, the C profile, typically that person would be good in you know, a role like a bookkeeper or an accountant or things like that because they're really analytical and they're really, really focused on the detail. So in that regard, it's really good to be able to get balance in a team. And it's a great tool for individuals um, to have a really good awareness of themselves and also how to approach different situations and, and little, little ideas of how to pick up on what they think somebody else might be and then change their approach if it's not quite working. Great stuff. Well, I will have to have a quick look up on that disc profile and, um, you know, just fire whoever is not compatible with me <laughs> at the end of the day. Now, obviously, in the, in the space that we're working in, we, there's, um, you know, softwares, there's other tools that people can just maybe plug into. Is there any other HR tools that you may, um, you know, offer to people? I know it might be taking into your lunch money, but at the end of the day, every time I wake up, there's always a tool that's out there that's already designed to take my job away. If it makes it easier for people to, you know, work through the, a cloud-based solution, you know, it, it, it's, it's better for them. Is there something that you can recommend that um, entrepreneurs can have a quick look at? Yeah, absolutely. So it's probably um, two that I would talk about, I suppose, the most. There's one, Enable HR. So it's a, a cloud-based HR system. So it stores all of the information in the cloud. So it's like a personnel file in the cloud. So I've got some clients who are pretty much paperless in their office. So all of their employee records are stored within Enable HR in the cloud. And um, that even includes sending employment contracts to people where they can electronically sign, they can log in and uh, do most of their um, things they need to do online. 
online. So um, it's a really good system for businesses, especially when um, there is maybe the business owners trying to do everything as they start to grow. Um, it's just um, a system that takes care of all of that. Um, it's got um, contracts and policies um, written by employment lawyers. So um, you can feel really confident that all of the documentation that you're using is um, legally compliant. I've also got um, another um, system that I've actually built myself and it's called my HR partner. So it's myhrpartner.com.au. And it's, a, it's probably a, a very sort of entry level um, system for people when they don't have a lot of money, so they don't really want to spend a lot, um, where they can actually go and access a whole heap of information. So instead of searching for hours on the internet to check what the pay rate might be for your new employee or what award you should be using, it's sort of like a one-stop shop with um, checklists and um, all of that information in the one place. Understandable. Well, thank you so much there, Karen. I mean, that's a wealth of information um, that you've just, you know, put together in one episode. I really, really appreciate that. And also, maybe we've got viewers that have been listening and are really, um, you know, sitting at the edge of their seat. How can people get a hold of you so that you can start uh, working with them as their outsource um, HR person? Um, a couple of ways. So they could call me on one three hundred double six two three double nine, or they could go to my website. Um, as I said, there are two, but um, my Hill and Staff Solutions website is www.hillandstaffsolutions.com.au, or the My HR Partner, which is www.myhrpartner.com.au, and there are links to my email address on on those sites. Understandable. I uh, will definitely put um, all those links in the show notes so that people can get a, a good access of you. Now, there's quite a lot of questions that are probably being raised by, um, you know, the, the, the viewers that are watching here. And some of them are probably thinking, oh, I did not know I could outsource, um, you know, HR or why would I need to, you know, have somebody deal with, you know, my HR affairs and stuff like that. So um, in any case, if somebody's having doubts and just is not certain or is sitting on the fence on outsourcing their HR, what sort of two or three words can you give them, um, you know, just to, you know, calm them down and to realize that this is something that is really important in their business? Um, it doesn't have to be as scary as what people think and um, I do actually offer a free HR audit so if they're not sure what they've got, if they've got enough, if they've got anything, um, I'm always happy to have a chat um, to somebody, um, just give them a few ideas and um, yeah, do that free HR audit so they can um, get an idea of what, what gaps and what risks they might have. Understandable. Well, <laughs> Karen, I can't thank you enough for your um, information and expertise on this episode today because a lot of us are wasting time, money and effort doing things that are not meant for us while we're doing, you know, maybe breaking the law in the process. So why not reach out to experts um, like, um, you know, Karen, that would be more than happy to help you out so that you too can be productive in your work and be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Karen, your expertise, your time and your knowledge has been appreciated on this show today. Thank you so much. No worries. Thanks a lot. This is just a little insurance for me. Just in case people don't watch this video, we both know why. Yep. It'll be me. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay i'm supposed to be working and so should you all right let's do this okay <laughs>